Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today, we're going to talk about TIG welding uh, an aluminum butt joint. I've done a video similar to this before. This one's going to have a little bit different slant on it because I'm going to weld two joints. One, I'm, going to, I'm not going to clean at all. The other, I'm going to clean somewhat thoroughly. And I'm going to do one thing that's going to make all the difference in the world. Let's get into it. All right, this is the first joint. I'm going to get tacks on each end, and that's all. These pieces are only about six or seven inches long so that's really all they require especially because I've kind of got them locked down in this little fixture block now this fixture block is is made so that it can provide purge gas but I'm not using any I don't have any argon hooked up to it so I'm getting a tack on the ends and I add a little bit more than the minimum it's pretty easy to blow away an end on something like this now it looks pretty thick this is this is 063 1.6 millimeter thick aluminum I've got it magnified in a lot of cases so it looks a lot thicker than it is. So I'm starting on that tack and as you can see here that tack kind of gives me, kind of saves me right there. I still ran into it a little bit more. I should have uh, probably not used quite as much foot pedal until I was a ripple or two away from it. But it's okay. So I'm welding along. Things are looking pretty good. Again I didn't do anything to this joint. I didn't wire brush it. I didn't clean it. I didn't scrape the edges or file the edges. I just pretty much stuck it in there and welded it. This is pretty clean virgin material, that, but it's been in a box. It does have sheared edges. And so we're going we're gonna to show in just a second the problem with not cleaning that sheared edge. So let's take a look at the finished weld here. It's, it's fairly uniform. It's for, for most cases, it would be acceptable. Some stringent applications, they probably wouldn't like the way the root pass looked on the surface finish. But again, this was done with, with uh, no argon or anything on the back. It punched through. It's got that oxide line down the middle of the root that you'll see on a lot of aluminum joints, but sometimes that doesn't really mean anything. This is a common test joint to get an aerospace job. It's usually one of several. Like, you know, aerospace jobs, have lots of different material types. So the place I used to work, I used to give these tests. Aluminum was one of the joints, and it was probably the most common to fail. One, at least one, it was probably the top two anyway, of the most common to fail an x-ray test. Porosity, almost always the culprit. So you would, you would do a visual inspection on it, have to have full penetration, no underfill, uniformity, things like that. Send it to x-ray, and it might fail. Now we had a rash of these come back one time, like couldn't pass anything. Everything, everything had porosity in it, so we had to start figuring out what the problem was, you know, and start troubleshooting. Uh, try different cylinders of gas, try different electrodes, different filler metal types, different fill, filler metal lot numbers, different cleaning methods. And it would take a little bit of a loop, you know, it would take about a day to get the results back, sometimes two days to get the results back from x-ray. So I found a quick way to at least know whether we were on the right track, and that is, that was just to take a Scotch-Brite wheel, a pad, a disc and skim the back side of the root and see if we had porosity in it or not. Now we couldn't send that one to x-ray but at least it would let us know if we if we started getting almost all of them good by changing you know the cleaning method or whatever then we could okay I think we found the problem now we start sending you know welded as welded joints to x-ray so that's why I'm going to show you in a minute here and that's where we're going to compare this joint to the next joint when we fix the problem. All right. <laughs> Too much talking, not enough welding. Let's get to it. So I'm using a brown Scotch-Brite disc here, a Rolox disc on a, on a little grinder. doesn't take much. And I'm knocking off the surface, and then I'm putting on a finer grit Scotch-Brite. And you can see that linear porosity just kind of jump out at you. It's in a straight line. That's what linear porosity is. And the tolerance for linear porosity is pretty strict in most welding codes. A lot more strict than scattered porosity. So I'm cleaning the edge now. I'm using a deburr tool. You can also use a, a nice clean file or both. I'm doing a little wire brushing here with a clean stainless steel brush and then I'm going to wipe it with acetone. I'm not going overboard here. I'm not cleaning this like it was uh, a test that my job depended on, but I am cleaning it fairly thoroughly. So I'm not going to show this one in real time. I'll just Show a little bit of the arc shot here so you can see it really doesn't look a whole lot different than what the last one did. I'm trying to use everything the same, a tapered electrode on each, on each uh, weld test joint. And that looks relatively the same, except that this joint has been fairly thoroughly cleaned. 
Again, no argon purging on the back side, just air. So let's take it out of the fixture now, kind of look at the back side, see what we got. Okay, punch through. You know, it doesn't look as good as it would with argon or with even a better chill fixture. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to buff this down with Scotch-Brite pads, both both brown and and burgundy, to get it shiny enough to where I will reveal any pores if there are there if there are any there. And you don't really see any. I mean, I think there might have been a tiny little pore or two, but what a difference! What a difference. And the only thing really different that I did is I cleaned one and I didn't clean the other. And the main thing, after doing a bunch of these, I know the main thing was cleaning that sheared edge. Of course, it doesn't hurt to clean everything with acetone and with a wire brush, but look at the difference there. And when you see porosity in a straight line, linear porosity, you would kind of tend to believe that there would be some kind of contaminant in a straight line and that would be the sheared edge and I know this because I've I've you know I've dealt with a lot of these joints and that tended to be the culprit in most cases not always but when you got linear porosity look at cleaning that sheared edge now both of these welds might be acceptable for certain applications but not on a test weld so you want to put your best foot forward and clean that metal all right, well, that wraps it up for this week. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you would visit my online store at weldmonger.com. That is how I support these videos. See you next time.